Ambisonics is a full sphere surround sound format. In addition to the horizontal plane, it covers sound sources above and below the listener. Unlike other multi channel surround formats, its transmission channels do not carry speaker signals. Instead, they contain a speaker independent representation of a sound field called B format, which is then decoded to the listener's speaker setup. This extra step allows the producer to think in terms of source directions rather than loudspeaker positions, and offers the listener a considerable degree of flexibility as to the layout and number of speakers used for playback. Ambisonics was developed in the UK in the 1970s under the auspices of the British National Research Development Corporation. Despite its solid technical foundation and many advantages, Ambisonics had not until recently been a commercial success, and survived only in niche applications and among recording enthusiasts. With the easy availability of powerful digital signal processing, as opposed to the expensive and error-prone analog circuitry that had to be used during its early years, and the successful market introduction of home theater surround sound systems since the 1990s, interest in ambisonics among recording engineers, sound designers, composers, media companies, broadcasters and researchers has returned and continues to increase. Topic. Introduction Ambisonics can be understood as a three-dimensional extension of M, S, mid, side, stereo, adding additional difference channels for height and depth. The resulting signal set is called B format. Its component channels are labeled W display style W for the sound pressure, the M in M, S, X display style x for the front minus back sound pressure gradient y display style y for left minus right the s in m s and z display style z for up minus down the w display style w signal corresponds to an omnidirectional microphone whereas x y Z display style X Y Z are the components that would be picked up by figure of eight capsules oriented along the three spatial axes. Topic: Panning a source. A simple ambisonic panner or encoder takes a source signal S display style S and two parameters the horizontal angle theta display style theta and the elevation angle phi display style phi it positions the source at the desired angle by distributing the signal over the ambisonic components with different gains w equals s 1 2 Display style W equals S C D O T F R A C one S Q R T two X equals S cos theta cos phi Display style X equals S C D O T cos theta cos phi Y equals S sin theta cos phi display style y equals s c d o t sin theta cos phi z equals s sin phi display style z equals s c d o t sin phi being omnidirectional the w display style w channel always gets the same constant input signal regardless of the angles so that it has more or less the same average energy as the other channels w is attenuated by about 3 decibels precisely divided by the square root of 2 the terms for x y z display style x y z actually produce the polar patterns of figure of eight microphones see illustration on the right second row we take their value at theta display style theta 
and phi display style phi and multiply the result with the input signal the result is that the input ends up in all components exactly as loud as the corresponding microphone would have picked it up topic virtual microphones The B format components can be combined to derive virtual microphones with any first order polar pattern, omnidirectional, cardioid, hypercardioid, figure of eight, or anything in between pointing in any direction. Several such microphones with different parameters can be derived at the same time to create coincident stereo pairs, such as a blumline or surround arrays. A horizontal virtual microphone at horizontal angle, theta display style theta with pattern 0 p 1 display style 0 leq p leq 1 is given by m theta p equals p 2 w plus 1 minus p Cos theta x plus sin theta y display style m theta p equals p sqrt two w plus one p cos theta x plus sin theta y. This virtual mic is free field normalized, which means it has a constant gain of one for on-axis sounds. The illustration on the left shows some examples created with this formula. Virtual microphones can be manipulated in post-production, desired sounds can be picked out, unwanted ones suppressed, and the balance between direct and reverberant sound can be fine-tuned during mixing. Topic. Decoding A basic ambisonic decoder is very similar to a set of virtual microphones. For perfectly regular layouts, a simplified decoder can be generated by pointing a virtual cardioid microphone in the direction of each speaker. Here is a square L F equals 2 W plus X plus Y 8 Display style LF equals SQRT two W plus X plus Y SQRT eight L B equals two W minus X plus Y eight Display style LB equals SQRT two W X plus Y SQRT eight R B equals two W minus X minus Y eight Display style RB equals SQRT two WXY SQRT eight R F equals two W plus X Minus y eight display style RF equals sqrt two w plus x y sqrt eight. The signs of the x display style x and y display style y components are the important part. The rest are gain factors. The z display style z component is discarded, because it is not possible to reproduce height cues with just four loudspeakers in one plane. In practice, a real ambisonic decoder requires a number of psycho-acoustic optimizations to work properly. Topic. Higher order ambisonics The spatial resolution of first-order ambisonics as described above is quite low. In practice, that translates to slightly blurry sources, but also to a comparably small usable listening area or sweet spot. 
the resolution can be increased and the sweet spot enlarged by adding groups of more selective directional components to the B format. These no longer correspond to conventional microphone polar patterns, but rather look like clover leaves. The resulting signal set is then called second, third, or collectively, higher order ambisonics. For a given order, display style L, full sphere systems require plus 1 2 display style l plus 1 caret 2 signal components and 2 plus 1 display style 2 l plus 1 components are needed for horizontal only reproduction there are several different format conventions for higher order ambisonics for details see ambisonic data exchange formats Topic. Comparison to other surround formats Ambisonics differs from other surround formats in a number of aspects. It is isotropic, sounds from any direction are treated equally, as opposed to assuming that the main sources of sound are frontal and that rear channels are only for ambience or special effects. It requires only three channels for basic horizontal surround, and four channels for a full sphere sound field. Basic full sphere replay requires a minimum of six loudspeakers, a minimum of four for horizontal. The ambisonic signal is decoupled from the playback system, loudspeaker placement is flexible, within reasonable limits, and the same program material can be decoded for varying numbers of loudspeakers. Moreover, a with height mix can be played back on horizontal only, stereo or even mono systems without losing content entirely, it will be folded to the horizontal plane and to the frontal quadrant, respectively. This allows producers to embrace with height production without worrying about loss of information. Ambisonics can be scaled to any desired spatial resolution at the cost of additional transmission channels and more speakers for playback. Higher order material remains downwards compatible and can be played back at lower spatial resolution without requiring a special down mix. The core technology of ambisonics is free of patents, and a complete tool chain for production and listening is available as free software for all major operating systems. On the downside, ambisonics is prone to highly unstable phantom sources and small sweet spot in loudspeaker reproduction due to the precedence effect. Prone to strong coloration from comp filtering artifacts due to temporally displaced coherent wavefronts when produced over loudspeaker arrays. Not accepted by quality-oriented audio engineers despite countless attempts and possible use cases since its inception in the 1970s. Often marketed with misleading representations that do not correspond to practical use cases, for example assuming a strictly spherical channel array and a listener sitting exactly in the middle or constraining wavefield plots to a tiny frequency range. Not supported by any major record label or media company. Although a number of ambisonic UHJ format UHJ encoded tracks principally classical can be located, if with some difficulty, on services such as Spotify. 1. Conceptually difficult for people to grasp, as opposed to the conventional, one channel, one speaker paradigm. The development of ambisonics technology is often undertaken by engineers who are not fully able to judge the perceptual result, while inexperienced users, blindly, trust said engineers because they themselves do not understand the precise ramifications. More complicated for the consumer to set up, because of the decoding stage. Topic. Theoretical foundation Topic. Sound field analysis encoding. The B format signals comprise a truncated spherical harmonic decomposition of the sound field. They correspond to the sound pressure W display style W and the three components of the pressure gradient x y z display style x y z not to be confused with the related particle velocity at a point in space 
Together, these approximate the sound field on a sphere around the microphone, formally the first order truncation of the multipole expansion. W display style W the mono signal is the zero order information corresponding to a constant function on the sphere while x y z display style x y z are the first order terms the dipoles or figures of 8 this first order truncation is only an approximation of the overall sound field the higher orders correspond to further terms of the multipole expansion of a function on the sphere in terms of spherical harmonics. In practice, higher orders require more speakers for playback, but increase the spatial resolution and enlarge the area where the sound field is reproduced perfectly, up to an upper boundary frequency. The radius r display style r of this area for ambisonic order display style l and frequency f display style f is given by r approximately equals c 2 pi f display style r approximately frac lc 2 pi f where c display style c denotes the speed of sound. This area becomes smaller than a human head above 600 Hz for first order or 1800 Hz for third order. Accurate reproduction in a head-sized volume up to 20 kHz would require an order of 32 or more than 1000 loudspeakers. At those frequencies and listening positions where perfect soundfield reconstruction is no longer possible, ambisonics reproduction has to focus on delivering correct directional cues to allow for good localization even in the presence of reconstruction errors. Topic. Psychoacoustics The human hearing apparatus has very keen localization on the horizontal plane, as fine as 2 degrees source separation in some experiments. Two predominant cues, for different frequency ranges, can be identified. Topic. Low frequency localization At low frequencies, where the wavelength is large compared to the human head, an incoming sound diffracts around it, so that there is virtually no acoustic shadow and hence no level difference between the ears. In this range, the only available information is the phase relationship between the two ear signals, called interaural time difference, or ITD. Evaluating this time difference allows for precise localization within a cone of confusion. The angle of incidence is unambiguous, but the ITD is the same for sounds from the front or from the back. As long as the sound is not totally unknown to the subject, the confusion can usually be resolved by perceiving the timbral front back variations caused by the ear flaps or pinna. Topic. High frequency localization As the wavelength approaches twice the size of the head, phase relationships become ambiguous, since it is no longer clear whether the phase difference between the ears corresponds to one, two, or even more periods as the frequency goes up. Fortunately, the head will create a significant acoustic shadow in this range, which causes a slight difference in level between the ears. This is called the interaural level difference, or ILD. The same cone of confusion applies. Combined, these two mechanisms provide localization over the entire hearing range. Topic. ITD and ILD reproduction in ambisonics Gerzen has shown that the quality of localization cues in the reproduced sound field corresponds to two objective metrics, the length of the particle velocity vector r v for the ITD, and the length of the energy vector r e for the ILD.
Gerzen and Barton 1992 define a decoder for horizontal surround to be ambisonic if the directions of R V display style VEC R underscore V and R E display style VEC R underscore E agree up to at least 4 kilohertz at frequencies below about 400 hertz R V equals one display style VEC R underscore V equals one for all azimuth angles and at frequencies from about seven hundred hertz to four kilohertz the magnitude of R E display style VEC R underscore E is substantially maximized across as large a part of the 360 degrees sound stage as possible." In practice, satisfactory results are achieved at moderate orders even for very large listening areas. <laughs> <laughs> sound field synthesis decoding. In principle, the loudspeaker signals are derived by using a linear combination of the ambisonic component signals, where each signal is dependent on the actual position of the speaker in relation to the center of an imaginary sphere the surface of which passes through all available speakers. In practice, slightly irregular distances of the speakers may be compensated with delay. True ambisonics decoding however requires spatial equalization of the signals to account for the differences in the high and low frequency sound localization mechanisms in human hearing. A further refinement accounts for the distance of the listener from the loudspeakers, near field compensation. Topic. Compatibility with existing distribution channels Ambisonics decoders are not currently being marketed to end users in any significant way, and no native ambisonic recordings are commercially available. Hence, content that has been produced in ambisonics must be made available to consumers in stereo or discrete multichannel formats. Topic. Stereo Ambisonics content can be folded down to stereo automatically, without requiring a dedicated down mix. The most straightforward approach is to sample the B format with a virtual stereo microphone. The result is equivalent to a coincident stereo recording. Imaging will depend on the microphone geometry, but usually rear sources will be reproduced more softly and diffuse. Vertical information from the Z display style Z channel is omitted. Alternatively, the B format can be matrix encoded into UHJ format, which is suitable for direct playback on stereo systems. As before, the vertical information will be discarded, but in addition to left-right reproduction, UHJ tries to retain some of the horizontal surround information by translating sources in the back into out-of-phase signals. This gives the listener some sense of rear localization. Two-channel UHJ can also be decoded back into horizontal ambisonics, with some loss of accuracy, if an ambisonic playback system is available. Lossless UHJ up to four channels, including height information, exists but has never seen wide use. In all UHJ schemes, the first two channels are conventional left and right speaker feeds. Topic. Multi-channel formats Likewise, it is possible to pre-decode ambisonics material to arbitrary speaker layouts, such as Quad, 5.1, 7.1, Oro 11.1, or even 22.2, again without manual intervention. The LFE channel is either omitted, or a special mix is created manually. Pre-decoding to 5.1 media has been known as G-format during the early days of DVD audio, although the term is not in common use anymore. The obvious advantage of pre-decoding is that any surround listener can be able to experience ambisonics, no special hardware is required beyond that found in a common home theater system. 
The main disadvantage is that the flexibility of rendering a single, standard ambisonic signal to any target speaker array is lost. The signal is assumes a specific, standard, layout and anyone listening with a different array may experience a degradation of localization accuracy. Target layouts from 5.1 upwards usually surpass the spatial resolution of first-order ambisonics, at least in the frontal quadrant. For optimal resolution, to avoid excessive crosstalk, and to steer around irregularities of the target layout, pre-decodings for such targets should be derived from source material in higher-order ambisonics. Topic. Production workflow. Ambisonic content can be created in two basic ways, by recording a sound with a suitable first or higher order microphone, or by taking separate monophonic sources and panning them to the desired positions. Content can also be manipulated while it is in B format. Topic. Ambisonic microphones Topic. Native B format arrays Since the components of first order ambisonics correspond to physical microphone pickup patterns, it is entirely practical to record B format directly, with three coincident microphones, an omnidirectional capsule, one forward facing figure 8 capsule, and one left facing figure 8 capsule, yielding the W display style W X display style x and y display style y components this is referred to as a native or nimbus halliday microphone array after its designer dr jonathan halliday at nimbus records where it is used to record their extensive and continuing series of ambisonic releases an integrated native B format microphone, the C700S has been manufactured and sold by Josephson Engineering since 1990. The primary difficulty inherent in this approach is that high frequency localization and clarity relies on the diaphragms approaching true coincidence. By stacking the capsules vertically, perfect coincidence for horizontal sources is obtained. However, sound from above or below will theoretically suffer from subtle comb filtering effects in the highest frequencies. In most instances this is not a limitation as sound sources far from the horizontal plane are typically from room reverberation. In addition, stacked figure 8 microphone elements have a deep null in the direction of their stacking axis such that the primary transducer in those directions is the central omnidirectional microphone. In practice this can produce less localization error than either of the alternatives tetrahedral arrays with processing, or a fourth microphone for the z-axis. Native arrays are most commonly used for horizontal-only surround, because of increasing positional errors and shading effects when adding a fourth microphone. Topic. The tetrahedral microphone Since it is impossible to build a perfectly coincident microphone array, the next best approach is to minimize and distribute the positional error as uniformly as possible. This can be achieved by arranging four cardioid or sub-cardioid capsules in a tetrahedron and equalizing for uniform diffuse field response. The capsule signals are then converted to B format with a matrix operation. Outside ambisonics, tetrahedral microphones have become popular with location recording engineers working in stereo or 5.1 for their flexibility in post-production. Here, the B format is only used as an intermediate to derive virtual microphones. Topic. Higher order microphones Above first order, it is no longer possible to obtain ambisonic components directly with single microphone capsules. Instead, higher order difference signals are derived from several spatially distributed, usually omnidirectional, capsules using very sophisticated digital signal processing. The M32 Eigenmic is a commercially available 32-channel, ambisonic microphone array. 
Due to the aggressive equalization necessary, the timbrel and noise performance of higher order arrays is not currently comparable to traditional high quality recording microphones, and the resulting B format is increasingly band limited towards higher orders, raising issues of up and downwards compatibility. A recent paper by Peter Craven et al., subsequently patented, describes the use of bi-directional capsules for higher order microphones to reduce the extremity of the equalization involved. No microphones have yet been made using this idea. Topic. Ambisonic panning The most straightforward way to produce ambisonic mixes of arbitrarily high order is to take monophonic sources and position them with an ambisonic encoder. A full sphere encoder usually has two parameters, azimuth or horizon and elevation angle. The encoder will distribute the source signal to the ambisonic components such that, when decoded, the source will appear at the desired location. More sophisticated panners will additionally provide a radius parameter that will take care of distance-dependent attenuation and bass boost due to near-field effect. Hardware panning units and mixers for first-order ambisonics have been available since the 1980s and have been used commercially. Today, panning plugins and other related software tools are available for all major digital audio workstations, often as free software. However, due to arbitrary bus width restrictions, few professional digital audio workstations DAW, support orders higher than second. Notable exceptions are Reaper, Pyramix, Pro Tools, Nuendo and Ardor. Topic. Ambisonic manipulation First order B format can be manipulated in various ways to change the contents of an auditory scene. Well known manipulations include rotation and dominance, moving sources towards or away from a particular direction. Additionally, linear time invariant signal processing, such as equalization, can be applied to B format without disrupting sound directions, as long as it applied to all component channels equally. More recent developments in higher order ambisonics enable a wide range of manipulations including rotation, reflection, movement, 3D reverb, upmixing from legacy formats such as 5.1 or first order, visualization and directionally dependent masking and equalization. Topic: <laughs> Data exchange Transmitting ambisonic B format between devices and to end users requires a standardized exchange format. While traditional first order B format is well defined and universally understood, there are conflicting conventions for higher order ambisonics, differing both in channel order and weighting, which might need to be supported for some time. Traditionally, the most widespread is first Malham higher order format in the .amp container based on Microsoft's WaveX file format. It scales up to third order and has a file size limitation of 4 GB. New implementations and productions might want to consider the MBX proposal, which adopts the .caf file format and does away with the 4 GB limit. It scales to arbitrarily high orders and is based on SN3D encoding. SN3D encoding has been adopted by Google as the basis for its YouTube 360 format. Topic. Current development Topic. Research Recent conferences dedicated to or including ambisonics or spherical harmonic analysis illustrate the current research interest. Ambisonics Symposium 2009 at IEM, Graz, Austria, 2009 Second International Symposium on Ambisonics and Spherical Acoustics at IRCAM, Paris, France, 2010. Ambisonics Symposium 2011 at VIS Center, Lexington, KY, USA, 2011. International Conference on Spatial Audio at Hochschule für Musik Detmold, Germany, 2011. 25th AES UK Conference, 4th International Symposium on Amazonics and Spherical Acoustics, University of York, UK 
52nd AES Conference on Sound Field Control, Engineering and Perception, University of Surrey, Guildford, UK, 2013. EAA Joint Symposium on Oralization and Ambisonics, 2 Berlin, Germany, 2014. 55th AES Conference on Spatial Audio, Helsinki 2014 Second International Conference on Spatial Audio at Fraunhofer IIS, Erlangen, Germany, 2014 Third International Conference on Spatial Audio at IEM Graz, Austria 2015 Sounds in Space Research Symposium at University of Derby, UK 2011-2015 a free yearly event that includes research, performances and demonstrations of large scale, with height, ambisonics, an increasing number of institutions worldwide are maintaining permanent ambisonic playback systems for research, production, and concert use. Topic. Open source As of 2016 a free and open source experimental implementation exists in the Sound Codec Opus. Topic: Corporate interest. Since its adoption by Google and other manufacturers as the audio format of choice for virtual reality, Ambisonics has seen a surge of interest. In early 2016, Sennheiser announced its VR microphone, an implementation of the tetrahedral microphone design which produces first order Ambisonics. On January 2017, Zilia Company showcased ZYLIA Portable Recording Studio, which consisted of ZM1 Spherical Microphone Array, third order Ambisonics microphone and ZYLIA Studio software with applied technology of sound source separation and spatial filtering. On August 2017, Twirling launched the world's first VR audio microphone for mobile phone. A number of companies are currently conducting research in Ambisonics. BBC Technicolor Research and Innovation, Thomson Licensing Zilia, a company which develops tools and technologies for recording and post-processing of music and 3D audio. Dolby Laboratories have expressed interest in Ambisonics by acquiring and liquidating Barcelona-based Ambisonics specialist IMM Sound prior to launching Dolby Atmos, which, although its precise workings are undisclosed, does implement decoupling between source direction and actual loudspeaker positions. Atmos takes a fundamentally different approach in that it does not attempt to transmit a sound field, it transmits discrete premixes or stems i.e., raw streams of sound data along with metadata about what location and direction they should appear to be coming from. The stems are then decoded, mixed, and rendered in real time using whatever loudspeakers are available at the playback location. Topic. Use in gaming. Higher Order Ambisonics has found a niche market in video games developed by Codemasters. Their first game to use an Ambisonic audio engine was Colin McRae, Dirt, however, this only used Ambisonics on the PlayStation 3 platform. Their game Race Driver, Grid extended the use of Ambisonics to the Xbox 360 platform, and Colin McRae, Dirt 2 uses Ambisonics on all platforms including the PC. The recent games from Codemasters, F1 2010, Dirt 3, F1 2011 and Dirt, Showdown, use fourth-order Ambisonics on faster PCs, rendered by Blue Ripple Sound's Rapture 3D OpenAL driver and pre-mixed Ambisonic audio produced using Bruce Wiggins Wigware Ambisonic plugins. Topic patents and trademarks Most of the patents covering ambisonic developments have now expired, including those covering the Soundfield microphone, and, as a result, the basic technology is available for anyone to implement. Exceptions to this include Dr. Jeffrey Barton's Trifield technology, which is a three-speaker stereo rendering system based on ambisonic theory, US 5,594,800, and so-called Vienna decoders, based on Gerson and Barton's Vienna 1992 AES paper, which are intended for decoding to regular speaker arrays, US 5,757,927. 
The pool of patents comprising ambisonics technology was originally assembled by the UK government's National Research and Development Corporation (NRDC), which existed until the late 1970s to develop and promote British inventions and license them to commercial manufacturers, ideally to a single licensee. The system was ultimately licensed to Nimbus Records, now owned by Wyastone Estate Limited. The interlocking circles ambisonic logo UK trademarks UK 00011131276 and UK 00011131277 and the text marks ambisonic and AMBISON UK trademarks UK 00015001177 and UK 00011122259 formerly owned by Wyastone Estate Limited have expired as of 2010. Topic. See also Ambisonic reproduction systems Ambisonic decoding Ambisonic UHJ format List of ambisonic software List of ambisonic hardware List of permanent ambisonic playback systems Nimbus records Soundfield microphone Notes <laughs>